What's up guys? This next circuit, this next thing that we're going to try, we need a ball. So we're going to change it up a little bit. This is a, like a mix between a tennis ball and a, a lacrosse ball. So I actually have a lacrosse ball in my bag over there. You can go buy it from the gym, from Dick's Sporting Goods. They're like three bucks, extremely cheap. You can get a tennis ball if you have any tennis balls lying around the house. You can use a golf ball. Really any kind of ball works. And also how I'm making this circuit, you actually don't need a ball. So like you should know by now, all of these exercises that I make, you don't necessarily need these things. These are optional and extras and add-ons. But especially in this one, it's gonna take the exercise to a, a deeper stretch because we're stretching out with the ball. So go ahead and grab a lacrosse ball, tennis ball, any kind of ball or like maybe an object. If you have a foam roller, you can do it with a foam roller too. Really just be creative here. I mean, you're, all, all we're gonna do is put it uh, on some resistance on parts of our body. So something that you can use for that. So moving on, we are gonna get three movements. First, we're gonna do trigger point, I call it, on our pec muscle, on our chest. So this is gonna be opening up our chest. If we find ourselves in this posture a lot, it can pull us out of it. So great movement there. We're gonna do five each. Then we have uh, hip flexor trigger point, so putting it on our hip flexor. And then we're gonna end with jumping jacks. So I like to end with jumping jacks because we just opened up these areas by pressing the ball into our muscle. Now we wanna get blood flow to those newly opened up muscle tissues and areas rather than just opening it and then not doing anything with it. So first movement, we're gonna start out lying down on our chest, on our bellies. I'm going to put the ball, any object, like a foam roller, whatever it is, right on the, you could call it the intersection of where my chest ends and my shoulder begins. Now, I will preface with any time we're trigger pointing or foam rolling, you don't want to have a foam roll a joint necessarily, so I'm not putting it on my shoulder bone, I'm putting it right on that muscle tissue of my chest, right in between the chest and the shoulder. So what I'm going to do here now, and really the best thing about this stretch, I mean I've, I've trained hundreds of people, is that this works with both men and women can do this. There's, there's no like weird positions you're putting it in any weird places. I'm doing this so everybody can do it. So I have it right in that intersection right now. I'm going to start with that same hand on my low back, palm is facing up. So I can just relax my forehead here, I don't have to do anything else. So all I'm going to do is go up, my palm then flips towards the ground, and I'm moving my arm up, and what I'm doing, I'm, you can control how much pressure you're putting into the ball. And I go all the way up, still trying to keep pressure on that ball. And then now I'm going back down. As I go back down, I flip my hand back up and reset. So this is, you could say option one is doing it on the ground. If you have a yoga block, you can put your uh, ball on the yoga block. That will increase the intensity of the stretch. Now, if I have, if I'm in my house, it's a little bit different to show right here on the wall. But if, if I'm in my house and I have a column in front of me, I could put my uh, one side on the column and the other side goes in front of the column and I'm doing the same thing here. So if I was doing it on the wall, or if this was the edge of the column meaning in front of me, there was nothing, I could do it the same thing like uh, right there. So that's gonna be five each, opening up our chest again. Then we're gonna bring it to hip flexor trigger point. This one we do need to be on the ground. So hip flexor is gonna be that intersection right where my, like on, on this case, right where the, the seam or where the little belt thingy is, a loop of my shorts, right where it becomes my uh, hip to my torso. I'm gonna put it right there where it's muscle again. I don't necessarily want it to be on a, any bones or joints. So I'm just gonna lay down on that ball. I already feel it. If you're extremely tight, you're probably gonna feel it enough right here. But since we're doing five each, so what that means is we're almost doing a donkey kick. So I'm going to bend this knee, and then what I'm doing now, I put pressure into the ball, and then I'm going to kick up that same side leg. So what I'm doing here, I'm really lengthening that hip flexor, and as I lengthen it, and, and if this is my muscle, I'm lengthening it, and then that ball is digging in there, and really uh, stretching out, kind of uh, flattening or, or morphing that tissue to not be so tight if you are tight there, which I'm feeling it. So you're just getting small little kicks. You don't have to go too high. Again, you're trying to ooh, keep pressure on the ball the whole time. So this is gonna be five each side. 
Then, ooh, wow, that's a really good one. So five each leg, once I get that, okay, set your ball down, make sure not to jump on it during this part, and we're gonna get jumping jacks. So again, we just opened up, so now we wanna move, we're either getting step jacks, or we're getting jump jacks, just for 30 seconds. So start your timer, nothing crazy, just trying to get blood flow to those areas that we just stretched. We have this three times, so repeat it each stretch, and jumping jacks three times each, y'all. Let's go.